hands. No, no, better, no better looking. Tell me something. Who's older? <laughs> I, I, I like those really? guys. I like those guys. Really? What? You guys better look closer, <laughs> man. Gosh. But yeah, I'm older. I'm he's, cool. he's asking for you guys to lie. You know, wait, when people go to the table, it's much easier because when I ask who's older and they see us at him, 90% of the time it's him. And now you guys so fast. I, saw, I know where you live. Who was it? Oh, it was you. Yeah. I already, I got you. <laughs> All right. Hmm. I can see why they didn't give you lines on the show. <laughs> now, you were actually working as a, a security guard on, um, on a film that was directed by Ken from Street Fighter, of all people, and approached you and said, would you like to be in the film? And you said, no. <laughs> I did. I was, I was doing security. I was, for that one, I was doing bodyguard for, uh, for one of the actors. I was going to walk him to set. And the day I was outside the trailer and I'm like, like this with my hands crossed and I'm waiting for the actor to come out. And the director comes, he's coming from over there, right? From the parking. And I never talked to the guy, he was the director and I'm just doing the bodyguard, just walking the guy, I never talk. And so this day I'm waiting and the guy, you know how when you feel somebody's watching you, somebody's looking at you, but I didn't want to look because he never talked to me. It's been a month that I've known this guy, but he never talks to me. He never says hi, no good morning, nothing. And this day I'm waiting and he's walking and I feel he's walking and I feel he's, but I'm like, he's like, whatever. And then he stops right here and I'm like, oh crap. Oh shit. Am I in trouble? Am I in trouble? And then he goes like this. When he stops next to me, he goes like this. Huh. And at the time I had tattoos on my neck. Right, I had tattoos on my neck, so he goes like this, and, and he's like, do you want to be in the movie? And I'm like, what the? I was like, no. Because I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought he was going to hire me to be like, like background extra work, you know, like not going to pay me a lot and just do some, some weird, you know. I was like, no, no, that's cool. You know, thank you so much. But no. So he left, and he went to talk. He went. I can see him walking. He just, he said, okay, fine. He goes and goes over there, and I... Video Village is where they have the cameras and the director, the producer, the big kahunas are there, right? So he walks over there, and I'm thinking, oh, and the group of people is like 10, and they all do this. And they're looking at me now because he went over there, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I should have said yes. They're going to fire me right now. And then 10 seconds later, a little guy comes to me, like out of the group. One person comes. He's walking. He's the guy that's going to tell me I'm fired. And the guy walks, comes to me, he said, hey, uh, are you sure you don't want to be in the movie, man? And I'm like, no. And then he spoke my language. My language is this. He said, look, man, we're going to give you $500 right now if for 30 minutes you go over there and just do what you're doing here right now. $500 cash for 30 minutes if you go stand over there like the bodyguard of the actress. I was like, let's go. <laughs> And so I, that's how it started. That same guy that came out, the little guy, he became my manager. And then he got me an agent. He got me to acting school and things like that, you know, to get more experience, you know. And then that's how I grew. That's how I, little by little I learned. But that's how it started. And then, yeah. And the same thing happened to him years later, but we'll get to that. But you go from that and then pretty much the next film is you're doing Collateral with Michael Mann, Tom Cruise, and Jamie Foxx. That's not a bad transition from Bodyguard to Tom Cruise films in one move. That, eh, that, that was, you know what was cool about that? Like, you said that, right? And me, I always thought, you know, it's just uh, whatever, right? When I auditioned for, for Collateral, I had already worked on another show for Michael Mann, the director of that movie. But me, I wasn't like a, an actor actor yet because... It was my, what, like third job or something, and I'm learning. But I had already worked one show, which was called Robbery, Robbery Homicide Division with my command, the director. And so when I got collateral, you know, you got to do a fitting to try all the clothes that you're going to use in the movie, like every single day, different clothes, whatever it is. And so my command comes in. And I worked with him a few months before. So he's introducing himself to everybody that's there. And, and then comes me. I knew who he was. He's the freaking... 
the director, producer, and the whole enchilada. He's the man. And so when he got my turn, nice to meet you, Mr. Michael. And he said, Louis, I remember you. You work with, and I'm like, you remember me? And he said, yeah, I remember you. That's why I, Louis, welcome. It was, that made me feel really good. That was like really, 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 really cool. <laughs> and then I met Tom, and you know what the cool, hey, you know, there's a lot of talk about Tom Cruise, right? Some people think he's weird. Some people think that, to me, my experience, I like me, he was a cool guy. He was really, really cool to me because, again, I was the new guy. And remember this. This dude, I was supposed to shoot at him from a distance from here to where the hat. You with the hat? That distance, bro. I was supposed to shoot him. I was just a bad guy on the movie. And he was supposed to shoot me back. And when Tom Cruise came, we rehearsed this, right, with his stunt double. But when Tom Cruise came to the set, he went over there to his spot, and he saw me. He had never met me, but they asked, hey, who's gonna sh who am I going to shoot, and who am I? And he said, that guy. He, said, me. he walks to me, straight to me. Me being the new guy, I'm thinking, I'm not even going to bother because everybody wants to go talk to him. He's going to be like, get off me, man. No, he walked to me, and he was like, hey, man, nice to meet you. My name is Tom. And he was so nice to me, he said, do you feel comfortable? He's asking me, do you feel comfortable, Louis, if I shoot at you with this fake gun? And in my mind, I'm thinking, fuck, you're Tom Cruise. You can do whatever you want to me, bro. <laughs> but I said, yeah, man, thank you. But, but, but he was so nice to me, you know what I'm saying? He didn't have to do that. He's Tom Cruise. He can, he can probably shoot a real gun to, and, at me, <laughs> okay, and nobody okay. would care. You know, but he was so nice to do that. And he said, well, nice to meet you. Let's do it like this. And he was very, very nice. So that was a really cool experience. And I got to see him acting in that scene with Jamie Foxx. It was Jamie Foxx, Tom Cruise, and Javier Bardem. And they were like, from here to where you're at. It was like a, it's like an acting class. Because they were right there and I'm just like, because they were so good at doing it. It was like a, I, I was like the best show ever. I was like, wow, cut, can we do it from here? And they would pick it up like that. It, it, was, um, it, was, it was cool. That's when acting really clicked for me. I learned a lot that day with the, for, for, from those guys, man. You say you were doing that and, and you weren't an actor at this point then. So you went to interview for, for Breaking Bad. And how did that come? I was like, oh, we need twins. And you're like, oh, wait, I have a spare. <laughs> that, that's a funny one. Uh, remember when I said that uh, we're going to get to the same thing happened to him, how his acting started? Yeah. Well, when Breaking Bad came about, they, the, when they need an actor, they, say, um, they send a, 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 a description a to your agent of what they want. They said, we need a bad guy that looks like this, tall, bald, whatever, tattoos, whatever. Like, everybody has a description. We need a nice guy or whatever. Our description, the, the, when I got it, was we need two guys that look alike, that they're intimidating, they're mean, and preferably twins, or that look really, really alike. Okay. And I read it, and I'm like, yep, I'm not going. I'm not going to get this. He was not acting. He was not an actor. He had never been in front of a camera before. You cannot take a guy that's never acted. He's not part of the union to do a union job. I cannot do it. So I was like, I'm never getting this. But they send it to me. So I'm hoping, I hope someone looks enough like me so that me and that guy get it, right? So I went to the casting call. I studied the scenes. Oh, and at this, you all watch Breaking Bad. I'm sure because you guys are here. You guys wonder what my audition was because uh, we didn't have any lines. What do you guys think we audition? How, how do you think? Imagine if the audition is like, hey, you're going to audition for the part, the cousins that were playing, our audition is going to be this. <laughs> you guys got the part you're looking <laughs> No, the, uh, the, 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 the scenes that we did to audition for this role was the first time that Gus met Walter White at Pollos Hermanos. And they talk about Jesse being a, uh, you know how he tells them? Yeah, junkie. Yeah, about being a junkie part. That's the scene that we have visioned with. And I was thinking myself, like, I didn't know the show. I'm thinking, I'm auditioning for Gus. You know, I, that's what I thought. I didn't know. You know, but I was like, he's a cool bad guy. But so the thing is that when I did the audition, um, and it, it, with these people, the casting people that auditioned for Breaking Bad, when I w walked in, I had already worked with them on previous, on other shows, like probably like four other shows. So they knew me well, and I auditioned for them many, many times before for other shows. A lot. I worked with them, and I auditioned countless other times. So when I did the audition, everything worked out beautiful. I felt really good, did it? And after, you know, they, they're nice.
I said, so how is everything? Lewis, how is life? I said, life is good. Uh, everything, that, that, that. Any new tattoos? And I was like, that's when I come in. As a matter of fact, I said, I do have a new one. I have one here on my leg that my brother did. And so when I said my brother, they were like, you got a brother. <laughs> you got a brother. And everything stopped. And I was like, yes. Is he an actor? No. And so from me saying yes, they were like, you have a brother? No, he's not an actor. They went like that. I deflated them. But then after that, they, they thought for a little bit. And they said, you know what? Here, there's two scenes, the one that I just did. Bring him in tomorrow. Help him. Take him home and help him out. And uh, bring him in tomorrow and see what we can do. You know, so that's how it happened. As soon as I got out of there, I got on the phone. I said, get to the house right now. <laughs> You know, and he got to the house, and that was a whole nother mission because the poor guy, I, I'm not that nice with him. Remember, he's my, remember, I'm three years older. You, you, all the not brothers. Nice. You guys, you, nice. you guys, you guys know what's up. Yeah, this is, this he is knows. Nice. You guys know, I'm the other brother. I'm like, I was not nice. I was like, get to the house right now. And he got oh, to the man. house, and I was mean, bro. Like, I told him, get in the room, study this. Because this is important. Go in the room, <laughs> go in the corner and study. Yeah. I even got him coffee. No, go back in the room. He came out, to, no, go back again. It was crazy. And then we went the next day. Uh, to do the audition for him. And you know the funny thing? You know how he, you guys, a lot of you have been to the table downstairs, right? You know how he talks and he's all talking. Sometimes he talks too much. But the day of Sometimes. the audition, hey, the day of the audition, things I was like this. <laughs> I was, I'm not going to lie, I was nervous. It was a big opportunity and I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> yeah, it was, so, it was so funny to see. I wish I could have recorded was, that yeah. shit. But uh, he went and did the two scenes. And then they called me in with them together, and we did an improv in Spanish. And they said, great job, guys. And we were, they, you know one thing, when you're going to the audition, they always say, great, great job. So I'm like, shut up, bullshit. <laughs> you know, I, I want you to tell me when I did a good job, when I did it. When I don't, don't tell me. <laughs> but I'm like, they say great job. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but we left, and two days later, they called us. We got the job. Two weeks after that, we were on our way to Albuquerque to shoot Breaking Bad. And the first thing that he did was the big explosion. He didn't do, hey, hey, he didn't do bad, huh, for hey, a first job? Hey, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's go, let's go rewind. Tell him the story. This, oh my God. I shouldn't have asked. Tell him the story. Tell him the story. Tell him I'm not a nice guy. The whole time we were on Breaking Bad, from the, but you know what, even from the first, you're probably going to ask me that question, but I'm going to already go because I'm more, I don't even need to be here. <laughs> I had a lot of, <laughs> hey, I had a lot of coffee. I got a sense what it was like growing up. So trust you know. me, I'm going to work at this. I had a lot of coffee. You guys don't worry. Hey, so the first day that we get to the set, we're <sighs> shooting in the desert. And, and funny, I have to tell you guys, you know the desert that we shoot at? You guys think it's Mexico? It's across the, like the studios right across here. The studios. And the desert is to that wall. We just cross the street and it's a desert. We're in Mexico. It, but it's really <laughs> nice desert because the pavement is right there and the studio is right there. But that way it looks like desert, but it's not. <laughs> but the thing is, so we go to desert the first day. We go deeper into the, it was like a 10 minute drive from the studio. And so we're driving in a van, him and I. And then we drive, we get out of the car. And Brian, oh, Brian is directing, Heisenberg, <laughs> Brian Cranster is directing the first episode. Oh, and so we get out of the car. And Brian is like maybe like 20 feet away, right? And we're walking. And this guy, whoo. This guy, we're walking, and he's like, and he goes like this. Hey. That's, that's the guy from Malcolm in the Middle. That's what he asked me. He said, is that the guy, hey, is that the guy from Malcolm in the Middle? And I was like, shut up. Be serious, God damn it. And I, I was like that because I was trying to make a small say, shut up, be serious. Then God damn Hey, Brian, nice to meet you. But that was the first thing he said, this guy. And they went throughout the whole thing. You have oh, no idea. Every single time he had to do something, my husband, oh, with me, I was like, okay. This is not fucking happen like this and be fucking and think that is real. But I was like this, I, I like this, me. I was like, think that is fucking real. He was and barking was, at me the whole relax, time. Relax. Hey, I was trying to tell him, like, relax right now. All, 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 all I'm I was gonna kill you. <laughs> it was funny because I don't know, I, you know, I wanted him to feel relaxed. But I was I don't, not relaxing I don't me. Know, man. I was not relaxing me. It, it was crazy. I, I just wanted him to. Like the explosion, you know, when, when he had to go shoot, he had to go shoot the guy when we killed the people in the little truck and the explosion had to go. So I tell him when he was going to go shoot that guy, okay, look, man, this is nothing. 
You go over there like you're strolling, like it's a, it's a fucking Saturday morning. You're going to drink coffee, shoot him, go drink coffee again. Relax. It, that, that feeling that you get, when you, like if we do it every day, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the feeling of walking in the park, shooting somebody, walking and going drink coffee. That's how you should feel when you do this. So go fucking do it. Like excuse me if I'm but I told him, so go fucking do it. Like that. I don't know if that calmed him down, but hey, the thing is that he did it. And he did great. <laughs> but that was me coming him down. <laughs> I probably got him really nervous. <laughs> did you get to say a like, word I growing up? Right, so he could shut up. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was it? Did Daniel get to say a word in that house growing up? <laughs> We're saying that, I'm looking at your, one thing he has you be for, you're obviously, you seem to be like the, the most, you know, hyper of the two of you. But I looked at your, your IMDB. Now, IMDB is where a lot of casting people go to pick out, so you kind of have to sell yourself on this. So, Lewis has said, Lewis was born in Honduras. He's known for his work in Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, and Fast and Furious. Daniel went in a bit of a different direction. Daniel has a understated ferocity and a stoic authenticity that stems from his all-life charisma. He has... <laughs> Eyes filled it with history, further adding to his dangerous persona and golden boy imitating art. Did you write that yourself? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't write that down. My He's setting write, himself far better online. it down for me. <laughs> you know me really well. Oh, this poor guy. Wait, did you read the nice part about what? I didn't even hear that part. <laughs> he has eye, where is it? Um, Prison stuff? Stoic eyes. Oh, <laughs> college. Oh, co Prison. I, even, I was like, wait, are we talking about that? <laughs> Can we talk about that? Yeah, go ahead if you want. But they, since he, they touched about this, that now I'm going to get a little bit preachy here uh, for all the youngsters over here. Don't so, did right you guys there. know that, that him and I, we, we've both been to prison? Yes. Ooh. Are you, are you I didn't surprised? get any ooh. So you guys are not so. You guys already know us that good. Fuck. <laughs> you guys know us better than myself. No, but the Kuta, hey, look, man, we did. We have both been in prison. Not for anything crazy. We're not fucking crazy motherfuckers. A little bit only, but <laughs> but hey, they wanted re they wanted the real cartel okay on the show. No, but the thing is this, man. This is this happened over more than 20, 25 years ago. And just think, Danny and I come from a country, Honduras. You guys probably never even heard of this country. Third world country, Central America. Very little country, very poor country. We went to the U.S. Single mom raised us. We we got in trouble. We had one parent, and we were fin you know it's it's a hard thing to do. And so we kind of went the wrong way for a little bit. We both went to prison. But the cool thing is that we changed. You know, we saw everything. And so we did really good after, you know. We worked in the community, talked to kids. <laughs> I still remember you insulting me that way. Yeah, I'm old. Now, nah, thank you. No, I, but I, hey. I, I love that corner. You know, the cool, hey, the, so, so the, the cool thing is that hey, we changed. And we did a lot of community work. And, and you know how it is that people say, you know, your past helps you in the future, whatever the saying is, you know, it made us who we are now. You understand me? So now we have all this experience that we do use in the acting world now with all the experience we have from the past, but we also changed, like we really changed. It's been more than 20 something years since the last time we went to jail or anything like that. And we probably helped a lot of kids because like I'm talking to you guys, we did motivational speaking, we talked to people in, in, in jails or schools about drugs, gangs, and all the bad shit that you can do. And you, t you gotta, Tell people how to skip that because that shit is not cool. It's really not cool. You have no idea how much better life is when you skip that and you go straight into what you want to do in life. It's like, oh my gosh, life is so much better. You know, to get where I'm at right now, imagine me, I have to waste like so many years of my life in prison and do this and have to pay money for this and do this. And it, I was like, man, I wish I never had to do that. I probably wasted like 10 years. I, I'm old already. And that's why I have no hair. I fucking lost it in prison probably, <laughs> you know. But imagine skipping all that BS and just focusing your, your energy into something that you really want to do. Man, you're going to get far in life. I promise you. You're going to get Skip so it. Skip far. It. Yeah, it's amazing. So now we're here and my mama, my, remember my single mama? She's just like, they're in Ireland, my boys. You know, we went to other countries we've been. And just to think about it, it's like, I'm not proud. I, I, I feel good for her because I know now she's happy with who ha we are now, you know, and, and I'm like, that makes me happy. A little bit proud of myself for that because it makes me proud that she's okay now. She doesn't have to worry. I'm a parent too, and my baby is old, but I still call him my baby, and I'm pretty sure that my mama still thinks that we are her babies. So imagine how good she feels. It's a freaking cool thing, man. <laughs> okay, I'll stop talking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs>
you kind of touched on it there. What's that like, though, when you go from the, the background that you had, and then all of a sudden you're on the biggest TV show in the world, and you, like, your, your characters became kind of instantly recognizable, like you, people dressing up with them, and it's, it's always someone the fans go, oh, I love those, the guys in those shows. Man, you know what, I man, seriously, this, this show has done so many things. For one, look, Breaking Bad, we were very small. If yeah. you think of the Breaking Bad world, our characters... In that the, the time we spent on the show was small, but we are thankful that it was memorable. You know, and another thing that we always think of this, aside from being memorable, when we see people, I'm pretty sure you guys all know that we, we talk. We're, we're, I, I think I'm an okay guy. I'm kind of nice to everybody, you know. So when I meet people, you guys took time from your day to come see me. See us. I got to give you some love for that. You know what I'm saying? So you give that back and you get it back from the people. So aside treat from people being the way you want to be treated. memorable on the show, we try to thank you guys because we know that we were not the main characters on the show, but you guys still show us love. So I got to give you love back. You know, so that feeling, bro, it's, it's a beautiful. Hey, I never had, imagine me, grow, hey, you know, when, we grow, when I grew up, man, I think I used to drive to where I grew up and I probably got pulled over every other day. The cops, and I haven't done anything. But I look like this, and then I think about myself. I'm like, I would have probably put myself over if I was a cop, because I look like shit. I look like a freaking criminal, you know. So all that happened to me, and I'm like, now that we're here, imagine the feeling that you guys and, and the way you guys treat us is, man, that's a beautiful thing, you know. I met some cool people down there, you know. I don't know how you guys are. You guys probably could be killers and try to kill me, but <laughs> the people that I have met and talked downstairs, freaking cool, man. All the love that we get, bro, it's. It's crazy. And the coolest thing is that we come back on Better Call Saul. Isn't that cool? And we don't die in Better Call hey, Saul. Oh, yeah, you guys know that? I'm going to spoil it for you guys. I, it's not, okay, don't, don't like, shoot no, me. Like, no. Remember, no, put that gun away. Put that gun away. Better Call Saul, <laughs> it's a prequel, so I'm not spoiling anything, okay? It's We're not before, supposed to die. It's before. We got to make it to Breaking Bad. <laughs> but yeah, we don't die, so yeah, take that. <laughs> <laughs> you said the last panel I had just before you was Michael Cuddles from Walking Dead, and he talks because yeah when my character got killed off and a guy in the front row went I hadn't got to that part yet <laughs> <laughs> well you guys know they're making another prequel the, the breaking but the guys come breaking bad and all the guys that die come and walking dead I was did gonna I actually ask you about that, that for you better no, call I'm, just <laughs> I'm just playing but that's not a bad idea I wouldn't mind the work. Fish, she was like no I wouldn't mind that work bro could we have a Salamanca prequel with the two of you and Hector is oh, that see, ever discussed see, or was see, that ever know that that would be nice. See, hey, bro, it's not serious. It's a nice. serious note. Like, I, I wouldn't, I mean, because I want, the, I want to work. And I love, I love, you know, one thing, another thing you guys don't know, probably one of my favorite shows, my, my favorite show to have worked on, not because it's Breaking Bad, it's Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, not because of the shows that they are, it's because of people. the people. The people that work in that freaking show in, New, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, is the best crew in the whole freaking world. From the PAs to the sound department to the Everyone. wardrobe to the DAs to the PAs to the directors to the everybody. Every single person in there. It was Beautiful. so freaking nice. It's like going to hang out with your friends. Like, hey, like after the first week of working on that show, it took us probably like 10 minutes to get to the set. We had to say hi to everybody. And it's a high that we have to go hug it. Hey, how are you? Tell, how, how are the kids? Like, you know what I'm saying? And the and boots were more the famous same. than us. Oh, yeah, the boots, yeah. Then in some time, the people that got, the new people that got to the set, they had already heard about the, the boots. So when they talked to us, and I don't want to insult anybody, but this is, this is how they talked to us. And I know how girls feel. They're like, <laughs> how, how are you, Danny? Oh, yeah. How, and they're looking down. Like, you know how when they're girls at the say, like, hey, my eyes are here, asshole. But the people were like, oh, how you doing? Oh, nice to meet you, Louis. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're looking at me, and I'm like, mm, I'm right here, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so we've also got microphones up here and up here. If anyone wants to ask a question, hopefully you have better luck than I do trying to ask questions. But they're there. Anyone has anything for the two guys, let us know. And um, obviously, you're both very verbose. You're very charismatic. You're a million miles an hour talking. How difficult it is then for Vince Gilligan to turn around and go, okay, you don't speak. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, hey, remember, I understand, well, remember, it's his first job. You know, one thing I'm thankful for was that because it was his first job ever. Just think of how blessed he was and I was because we did not have to deal with lines 
for his first job ever. Remembering lines and he didn't know interactions that. and everything. Yeah, so it was much easier in that sense because, you know, what you guys see on the show, how we are quiet and sometimes, sometimes we do things together. We kind of do that in real life. The only difference is that sometimes we talk a little bit more, but when it's just him and I, we're more quiet. It's just like on the show. It's like we know what we're it's thinking. Very but. similar to that. Lucky him, huh? No. <laughs> but yeah, no, but we're serious. Now, the fu I was just saying that. Now, the funny way you asked, you know what the funniest thing? That, and I, 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 This got the me. Zoom, Zoom call. The the, Skype. Yeah, the, we talked to Vince, right? About the characters. Because remember, we auditioned for Gus and Walter. That's what we thought, that we were going to be Gus or somebody like that was going to have a lot of lines, right? But when we actually got to the, uh, to, to the wardrobe fitting, Vince called on a Zoom call. And so we're talking to Vince. Vince Gilligan is the creator of the show. So we're talking to Vince, and he's like, okay, guys, what I want <laughs> is you guys are going to be the scariest, yes. the most intimidating yeah. hitmen that people are going to see you on TV, and they're going to be like, oh, shit, something bad is going to happen. Oh, my God. And, and he's like, and you guys are going to be King Kong. You, and you guys are not going to say, say a, word. a word. And I'm like, what the fuck? What did you eat, bro? Are you smoking? Like, what did are you, you, smoking? you understand me? Like, he, I was like, wait, you want us to do what and not say a word? I, I, I thought he was joking with me. I didn't say it because he was Vince Gilligan and he can fire me. But in my mind, I'm thinking this guy's crazy. But isn't it crazy how it worked? That it guy it was, freaking worked. Pure genius, right? It, it really worked because to me, I was like, this guy is nuts. And then we see the final product and I was like, never mind. He's a genius. <laughs> so you were terrifying, out nice. but you're also. Like two of the funniest characters on the show. Like the thing, one of my favorite moments in the whole series is when you go to visit um, Hector in hospital, and he's like, talk to him. And one of the guys turns around and goes, "You look good, Don Hector." And just this look you give him, like he is in a coma. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so much with so little. That was funny. You know, hey Hector, Mark Morgolis. Mark Morgolis. I think he's probably one of he's, he's, he's he's one of my favorite. favorite guys to work with. Really, he's my number one. I think <laughs> he's my number one. <laughs> No, Mark, the guy with the bell, he's, he, he's, he's our guy. He's our boy. Not that Giancarlo, Giancarlo's a sweet guy too, but we just, you know, Mark is just so nice. You know what the funniest thing about him is? That he is that character. He, he is he's the old Hector. Guy. Like, he will tell you shit like that, and the face is like this. Uh, I don't like you. You're a fuck. And then you're like, and he's, he's looking at you, right? And you're like... Is he serious? Yeah. Is he serious or is he fucking with me? But you, you just got to be a little bit. How do, you, how do you say when people like heavy jokers, you know, like you have to have thick skin or whatever. He's a great guy. Sweet guy. Very nice. He's serious and he's very He's an old time. He's like 80. But he is the nicest guy. He'll the most, tell it like it is. Yeah. He's a very real guy. Now, if he doesn't like you, you're in trouble. Because <laughs> trust me, he, I'm t like, he's that character. You're in trouble, bro. He, he will really tell you. Nah, you're. I don't. I don't like yeah. you. Like he will tell you. He'll probably call your name. You're a f freaking this and that. There's some kids here. I'm sorry. Beep, I'm holding. Beep, my, I'm trying to hold my tongue, beep, kids. Beep, beep. You know. But yeah, he's that guy. He's a good guy. If the kids know here, I think they're in trouble already. <laughs> if you wear the. I know. see that guy. You guys watch Breaking Bad? What? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even going to ask you your age. Good. <laughs> good. Hey, keep watching it so I can get a little the, uh, some of the residual money. Turn two TVs in your house. <laughs> and leave them on. And leave them on. <laughs> I have a, a question up there from someone who was also far too young to know who you are. <laughs> Hello. Um, I know it didn't end well for the last people who said this, but I like your boots. Um, I noticed you were wearing them. <laughs> um, and also, I have my twin sister and my brother there, and they haven't watched Breaking Bad, but I was explaining to them kind of about how it went and everything, and I showed them the hospital scene, you know where like you're dragging your leg, like the bloody legs, and like I couldn't help but laugh. It was actually funny re-watching it just there out of context. So I wanted to know like how do you feel if you watch back those scenes or like thinking or like looking back and watching yourself play like scenes like that, how does it make you feel? Do you ever laugh or is it like <laughs> shocking to see yourself like that? I don't know. Tell him tell him how you shot that thing so you can see how it was. you know how he will tell you. They put um they put some green stockings on me to be able to paint them off with the special effects. Uh, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a great scene uh, to be able to just jump off. And uh, they, they used the person that, that, had, been, that had served uh, the country.
and lost his leg, so they gave him an opportunity to be able to do that, that role and, and do the, be the stunt guy instead of a regular stunt guy. Who, who were they? Who were the, who, who was your cousins or brothers? Middle. My sister and my brother there. Oh, you know one thing about mm -hmm. that scene, though, that I want to say is, so if you guys, that scene was after I had already died on Breaking Bad, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So remember how I've been the one freaking do this and do that. I'm trying to direct this guy when he's supposed to do something. I was already dead. Was already so dead. I had to stay home. I did not travel to New Mexico with this guy for that scene. So I was nervous. But when I saw it, I was like, I did pretty well. I did okay, right? He did good so, job. Yeah. He did okay. He did, he did okay. good, right? Because he looked, he looked me. I was like, God oh, damn, he looks so me. Like when I saw it, remember, I did not see it, re uh, film it. But when I saw it on the screen, I was like, holy shit. I'm, you watch Breaking Bad, you can hear me say this. I was like, holy shit. He did fucking good. You know, because I was like, because he looked fucking scary. When I saw it myself, I was like, holy shit, he looks fucking scary. I looked at myself, I was like, God, that's yeah, me. That's yeah. me. I look, I, I, he man. did good. Hey, for a first job, you got to think. He did fucking good. I was like, this guy, he did good. He did freaking good. I was... I'm just picturing you going home and your parents asking, how did you get on? Oh, those these two fucking Honduran guys. And they were fucking... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys better not be, hey, uh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I just sometimes, you know, when you tell that story, if you throw one F, maybe two Fs, it, it kind of makes it a little bit, it is breaking bad, man, come on, it's about, you know, meth and... <laughs> I think we're past two at this point. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Yeah, just about a hundred. <laughs> you're saying that you're auditioning and you think you're going for Gus and for Walter, if you had to pick between you, who would be playing who? Wait, say what again? You started talking about auditioning and you thought you were auditioning for Gus or for Walter White. If you had to pick, who would be the better Walter White between the two of you? Oh, me. Go, go on, give us a... Why? Give us an eye on the danger there, or the, the one who knocks. The, oh, my... No, wait, wait, I have a few. Hold up. The I'm the danger is my favorite one, I think. No, I don't know how to do it, but I know... I, 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 know, I, know I like the one that says, uh, stay out of my territory. No, 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 no. That I was like terrifying that looking at me, so you've got the part. I like that one because that was like the determining <laughs> no. factor oh. how he changed. Oh, he After did. that, he was... Say my name. Remember that one? Yeah. Oh, that was my friend. Say my name. Oh, I love that, that one. See, that's a good line, but I like the stay out of my territory because that's when, when he, when he kind of realizes that I like this shit. This is the kind of shit I want to do. So <laughs> that, that's kind of one of my I like that we were lines. joking around, and you literally just turned and went, stay out of my territory, and I completely forgot where I was. And I was like, oh, sweet Jesus, no. <laughs> uh, another question up there? Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, and I was wondering, uh, out of them both, which ones did you prefer being in? Oh, man. Well, you gotta Why you got to pull me? That's, that's messed up, bro. No, uh, shit. You know what, bro? I, I have to, I'm not saying it's bad. You put me in the spot, man. I know where you live, too. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> no, but, hey, I have to say Breaking Bad because Breaking Bad is what it is. Come on, it's the, the, right now it's the best rated show ever, so it is the greatest show ever. I know you guys love other shows, absolutely, yes. But in ratings and, 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 and rated on the thing, it's the only show that has ever been rated so high, ever, is Breaking Bad. Not for that, but it, it, I mean, come on, it's, it's Breaking Bad, you know. Better Call Saul's a prequel was made because of Breaking because Breaking Bad was so great that we were able to do Better Call Saul. It's a prequel. Who the hell does a prequel? They have sequels, not prequels. It happened before because, I, oh, the show is so great, but we already killed everybody. We have to do something. Let's go back in time and, and bring everybody back. So yeah. I have to say that Breaking Bad would be my favorite, not better, but my favorite because of what it did for everyone. I mean, from not just us, but look at Brian, Giancarlo Esposito. These everyone. guys are doing beautiful things right now. They're doing so many freaking other cool, amazing things because of this show. A lot of people on this show became who, like, you know, they became the actors the that they are now. And they're doing so many other, Giancarlo's doing all the, the Mandalorian and, and, and Brian Cranston is doing all the freaking other movies, you know. But, hey, he's still a sweet guy, though. Hey, yeah, we saw him change so many lives. Yeah. Like, even, even uh, anybody, everybody from the production, uh, PAs, uh, the whole city created so many job opportunities. So, yeah. yeah. If you guys ever go to... to to America, to the United States, you guys go to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yes. <laughs> go to Albuquerque. I'm, go I Albuquerque. promise you, if you guys are Breaking Bad fans, that city looks like, not bad, but I'm telling you, <laughs> they have, the Breaking Bad store is freaking awesome. These guys have 
everything Breaking Bad that you can think of, they have it. Everything. And if, you, and if, you, if they don't have it because you said it, they'll be like, oh, we're going to do it. And they'll do it. it. And they have a tour. They have, you know what they have? They have a freaking do donuts. The Heisenberg. Oh, they got the, the candy. Crystal, the candy. The candy, the blue candy. They you guys everything. have to go. They have the car wash, everything. You guys, oh, yeah, guys. the Breaking Bad store, even now, we were thinking, like, how, how do you get this? How, yeah. how, how, they how got better stuff than we do. And, yeah. and they, really, they send they us do. a lot of. We have the boots. We have this. We, these are the real suits that we use on better ep call uh, season four. Better e call episode Saul. eight. Episode, yeah. Bagman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know if I answered your question, bro. <laughs> I got so carried away. It's all right. But, but I, I go with Breaking Bad. He answered the question. Not my favorite. <laughs> don't put me in a spot again. We got good. Remember, know where you live. He doesn't I'll care. I'll put He'll... you on my list right But I have to Breaking Bad for that reason. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's better, but Breaking Bad for, for everything that it did for us and for everybody. It was just beautiful. Remember, and, and Better Call Saul is the same crew. It's, it's almost like shooting Breaking Bad. Yeah. It's, it, everybody that worked on, on Breaking Bad... 10, 10, 12 years ago, now it's the same people working on Better Call Saul. Producers, it's the same people. Directors, it, actors, it was amazing. It was everyone. like, yeah, this is a party. Woohoo. <laughs> okay, should I be quiet? Sorry. You just mentioned there about Brian Cranston. Is it true he gave a speech at the end that you were kind of you were like, leaving the show that made you both kind of break down in tears? Well, I, I don't know about tears, but he was very nice. They do this for every for actors that like uh, you know the hottest season to work on the show. You, you know they do do a speech. He did one. A lot of people did one. It was not just him. There was other people that did it. And and you know it got a little funny. He can say a tear, but it, it might not have been a tear. You know what I'm saying? Might have been two. It, it was freaking windy, you know, and fucking dusty. And we just hey, and we just shot, no. We, you know the day that that happened was the day of the shootout, and the day of the shootout we had. Or was it one or two days on a scene that we were supposed to have a week to shoot? So we had two units working one in the same place. This never ha you never do this. You're supposed to do one and then finish doing that unit to go to the next one. That day we did not have time. And Breaking Bad by season three, we did not have the same budget that they had in season five and six. There was like a, a smaller show kind of thing. Like they, 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 they did not think it was going to grow to be that big. But the, when they won the first Emmy, yeah, we'll give you five million more to shoot it. <laughs> but they had to win that Emmy, and it happened in season three. So when we were shooting it, though, they had not given them the extra fire or whatever it was. So we had to do things fast. Yeah. And that day, I remember from shooting uh, the, the shootout thing with Hank, we were here with this guy, and we're doing a scene right now with Hank or dragging the axe, whatever it was. And cut! Okay, guys, run over there. And we have to go run over there to the next scene. Okay, in this scene, you're going to do this. Okay, yeah, okay. Ah, and I'm doing this. Uh, cut! Okay, go over hey, go there. Go we already we have another setup over there. Okay, go over there. What are we doing here? Okay, we're gonna do this. Okay, Boom. Cut. Hey, hey. oh man, that thing was crazy, <laughs> but it was fun. It got nominated for an Emmy for best director in that episode. It was freaking cool. I got sidetracked again, bro. I can't even remember what I got very much. <laughs> I have another question up there. Hi, um, I heard a rumor that in Breaking Bad, um, Brian Cranston got invited to like actually cook meth by the DEA. Do you know if that's like real? <laughs> Are you looking for hey. something? <laughs> First off, I like your shirt. Hey, you got style. There, there is a, see that the window over there, bro? Somebody's gonna shoot you from there. It's like a sniper over. There. See? I told you. Look at that guy. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> I thought he was like FBI or DEA. No, truthfully, I've never heard about that. I don't know. Maybe shit. But, hey, remember, the show is very secretive. Very secretive. You know how secret it is that when, when we got hired to do uh, even both on Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, Better Call Saul. they flew us on different planes. <laughs> and yeah. I, you know what I was thinking in my mind? Me, I'm always thinking, it is just Daddy and I. Nobody gives a crap about me and this guy. Nobody. Who the fuck? Nobody cares, man. We're not Brad Pitt, bro. Put us in the fucking plane. Nobody's going to notice we're there. You know, aside from the ball head, nobody's going to care. But they're super secretive that they had to put yeah. a se separate planes, separate, separate hotels. hotels. They picked us at separate times. They gave us different names. I was like, okay, you guys are a little over the top here, man. But they're fucking, they're serious. So if they're doing that with the DEA or the cooking thing, they never told me anything. Or maybe they were scared that I was going to buy some shit or something. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Um, what would you say your most um, kind of memorial, mem memor 
Memorable. Memorable. Memorable Fun moment. interaction is. Interaction? Yeah. Or moment. Moment at slash. Moment in the whole, the whole enchilada. Which one? Uh, for me, I think uh, the explosion. The, you know, the, the explosion we had with. It, it was both. It was, a, it was a moment and an interaction because it was with Brian. And remember, it was this guy's first job ever, right? So this is another thing he did. What, uh, what did he say, Brian? He told you with the... Oh, yeah, Brian with the cigarette, so... The ex this is episode one, the first time that we came on the show, okay? The explosion, the big explosion. Yeah, so, uh, you know, he won it was only one, one shot, one take, one explosion. And uh, he, he said, if you remember... No, 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 I'm trying to go back, I'm trying to go back. Yeah, so he, he left, and, he, and before he left, I, I told him, hey, uh, hey, Brian, so Lewis was smoking, and he had to ignite the, the, the gas with the cigarette, right? What about me? I was smoking my cigarette. Would I keep on smoking my cigarette or, or, or not? So he's like, nah, nobody's going to notice about the cigarette. Don't worry about it. He left, and he came back later, like five minutes later. He's like, you know what? That's a great idea. If you could remember... After the explosion, about a second or two after the explosion, if you could take a drag out of that cigarette, now like you're walking in the park, that would be great. Only if you remember, though. So I was like, in my mind, I was like, okay, cool. So the explosion goes up, and I start taking a drag out of that cigarette, like I'm walking in the park. We got shit flying all over the place, and then cut. And it was so cool that after, after the explosion, Brian just came running to us, like, so happy. It was unbelievable. And he just gave us a big hug. He's like, oh, my God, I cannot believe you guys did that. How do you guys not react? Look, remember one thing when he said the explosion? This is big. It was a big talk. It was not that same. This, he made it a little short. But there were two things that went into that. Before the explosion, for that scene, remember, the budget was smaller. It was not season four and five and six that they fucking give a big budget. So they had one truck, one set of explosives, nothing else. No pressure to us. It's like, guys, if you guys mess this up, they were very nice about it. If you guys mess up these explosions, um... Yeah, we're not going to be able to do it again. One take. You know, so we have one take, guys. And can you guys please not flinch, not move a hair mm. when the explosion goes off? I was like, yeah. but to me, I was like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, hey, in Hollywood, if you guys are actors, always say, no problem. No problem. I got it. I got you it. You want us to jump off the what? The 100 No problem. Don't worry, I got can it. Can you do it? Yes, I can. <laughs> that's what we did, but we did not know when that explosion happened. It happened, it was like from here to that door, and they did not tell us it was going to be that big. It, yeah, it was not but supposed you, to be that big. You know what the weirdest thing was about it? We noticed, him and I together, that just like you guys are here, probably double the amount of people when we're shooting a, a movie or a TV show is this plus two. It was like 100, 150 people, right? So when we were getting ready to, after the talk of one, explos uh, one explosion, one truck, one exp whatever, we have one freaking scene. And they say, okay, guys, so we have this, this, this. Are you guys ready? Okay, okay. And then everybody Started gets in cars. Walking away. And walks. Some people are getting in a van. And Go they're, and golf they're going away. everything. And then next thing you know, it's, it's just him and I. Out by ourselves, and they got a walkie right next to us. Yeah, and the, and the guys look over there like little ants like this. They're so far away. And then the, the radio that he mentioned was from like here to where the speaker is at. And this is even the funniest thing. The freaking radio had a glass protector. Like it was protected. We did not. We were not. So you notice that, right? And you're like, wait, why does the radio have in the and we're realizing shit and they're so far away. The radio's there. There was a camera there with protection. Like it had extra protection. The camera had like extra more than the radio. Even the camera burned. But the freaking radio had protection. And we're like, and so we're like this, right? We're on the thing and we're like, and the people and the radio. The the car is right there. And we're like, and we're realizing things, and they, from far, from the radio comes action, and you know when action, you have to you freaking have go. To so we're thinking, what the fuck, action, oh shit. And we have, and now remember, we have to think, we cannot flinch, we can, whatever happens, we're not going to move. We're not going to do anything. And so when that happened, action, but before this, what I didn't tell you is that I, this guy, remember the not nice brother? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gave it to him. That was not nice at all. Hey, it, it, but Trust me. When they gave us a talk, one explosion, 
one set of explosives, one freaking truck. I already knew that it was one take. So I gave this guy the run. I said, hey, can I fuck it up? I yeah. Like, I told him like that. And I told him, no matter what, if the explosion goes off and something hits you. If you catch on fire, just keep, keep walking. walking. Yeah. I told him that. But you have to think of this. We had a little bit of uh, fire repellent. Like the, it's like a white gel thingy, like gooey thing. So they put, it, they put it on us just in case. It was really close. And I told this guy, if you catch on fire, keep walking. If something hits you keep and it walking. does not knock you out, keep wow. walking. Anything happens, keep walking. If you do catch on fire and you catch on fire like really, really bad, then freaking start rolling on the goddamn ground. They're going to put you off really quick. The firefighter, they will be here in seconds. So don't worry about it. Just fucking do it. <laughs> like that, I was like really mean. But I really, I'm, I mean, I, seriously, I fucking meant it. Because I'm thinking in my mind, it was only one shot, one take. Yeah, one shot, one, and I'm thinking we're gonna fucking do it. Yeah, no, there was I, I no care. room for fucking it up. Uh, there was the, no room. Yeah, and remember, no in, in Breaking Bad, there is no CGI. Everything is fucking real. Uh, real. So the fucking truck, it had real fucking tires. And if you guys go back and watch that explosion, the fucking thing goes off, and the tires with the rims, they're poof. <laughs> Poof. And then the bodies for the people, there were, were dummies that were heavy like people. So if anything oh, yeah. hit you, trust me, that thing would have freaking hurt. Oh, yeah. I just, I mean, I talked big game when I said fucking do it, but I did not know it was going to be that freaking big, man. Because if I knew the fucking tire was going to go all like freaking 50 feet in the air and drop down, like that thing would kill me. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. But I, I gave him my talk and we did it. So. Yeah, it worked then out I felt pretty like, well, I felt right? like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> There's not but many jobs you can do where you can turn to your brother and say, if you catch fire, shut up and just deal with yeah, it. <laughs> I know, trust me. But I, I, but I know, I remember, I know him. And I know that he would have done it. He did it. He, we were, when you're going to do that scene, you're going with that mentality because you really do think this. You know how when you're walking, you feel you're going to get hit and, you, and you're like walking and you're just waiting to get hit and you feel, you're like, you have to go ready for that because the explosion was really big yeah. so you cannot be like walking oh shit oh you know yeah. so you can't you gotta you get it you gotta get it that's gonna happen you gotta so get you in walk, character and like you're like oh fuck it hope and you're waiting for something to happen but you want to keep the pace and the rhythm and, and you're expecting something to hit you and so you're willing to go to the end until that fucking thing hits you you want to go and like fuck it go ahead and hit me so i can keep walking normal oh fuck oh that was good we gotta keep you know <laughs> So, hey, we had to get in the... It, that was, I think, that the only time that we were, like, in it like that, you know? Because mm -hmm. the other times when we were, did the show, it was, like, action. action it, yeah. it was just us putting the ugly faces like this. <laughs> and that was the only time that we were, like, fucking, we gotta be on. Because <laughs> we have one. <laughs>